All right, so we are recording. So good evening, everyone. Uh, as we get started, I just would ask if everyone could please mute your microphones. That will help eliminate background noise and ensure that everyone is able to hear us. For those of you who I have not had the pleasure to meet, my name is Andrew Cook. I have the pleasure of serving as the superintendent of schools for the Hartford Central School District, and I am also the Adirondack League president, which is the sports league in which our teams participate on. On behalf of all of our winter coaches, our middle school, high school principal, Mrs. Dupuy, our athletic director, Andrew Capone, and Nurse Arlen, I'd like to welcome you to our winter 2021-22 Interscholastic Athletic Parent Meeting, and thank you for taking the time to join us and learn more about what our winter season may look like. Given the uncertainty of the COVID pandemic and the daily operations of the school, I'm sure that you have a lot of questions on what the winter season will look like, and we will do our best to try and provide you with as much information as possible as we work through the evening. We'll also include a time at the end for you to ask any questions related to your child's participation in basketball or cheerleading as well. Um, the one caveat I do like to, to note is that this is really just a general overview of the winter sports season. Once the modified JV varsity programs start in earnest, your coaches will have more information about how that specific program will operate, including team rules and expectations. Um, the key word for today's presentation or winter sports season is going to be flexibility. Um, given the increased number in the COVID cases in the region, the changing dynamics of school, the extreme shortage of winter basketball officials, and another, a number of other variables that we really have no control over, we are all going to need to be extremely flexible this season to ensure that our student athletes have the opportunity to participate. We need to appreciate that this is a very unique situation and what has been done in the past and what has worked in the past might not work this season and may need to be changed. There's a lot of moving parts that are going into this plan and we all need to be flexible to the greatest degree possible to ensure that we continue to provide this opportunity for our students. Um, just important to note before any student athlete can formally begin practicing or take part in any athletic activity, they must have an updated physical. The New York State Education Department is no longer waiving the physical requirement, as was the case last year. So if you have not had a physical from your primary care physician or from the school physician here at school, you need to make an appointment as quickly as possible to be able to ensure that you are eligible to participate on the very first day. Additionally, students must have completed and returned an updated health history index, the informed consent form, the concussion awareness form, the medical service permission, and if the student is considered high risk, they would need to also have approval from the school physician. Please do not wait to turn these documents in. These documents must be received, reviewed, and approved by the district and potentially our school physician before your student athlete can participate. If you wait to turn the documents in on Monday or the very first day of practice, you will not be able to practice that day. It takes the district time. We work through it as quickly as we can, but it does take time for us to go through these paperwork. So the sooner you can turn these documents in, the quicker we can process them and ensure that you're able to participate for the very first day of practice. These documents are all available on the district's webpage. And if you have any questions on the documents, please feel free to reach out to Nurse Ireland, Coach Capone, Mrs. Dupuy, or myself, and we'll make sure we answer all of your questions. Uh, for our basketball programs, the varsity and JV level teams can begin practicing on November 15th. The modified teams are eligible to begin the season the following week, November 22nd. Uh, varsity and JV girls tryouts will be from 4 to 6 p.m. on the 15th with the boys to follow from 6 to 8. Modified, that time on the 22nd is still, still to be determined. Um, cheerleading is eligible to start on November 15th, but there's some other variables that we have to work through uh, to try and figure out when exactly they were going to start. Additional information from your coaches will be coming out in regards to these practice times, but please mark your calendars for November 15th, JV and varsity, girls at four, boys to follow at six. Uh, current signups, 
they are listed on this page. As of right now, you can see our cheerleading numbers are very, very low. We have two student athletes signed up for cheering. At some point, the district will be working with our cheerleading advisor. We'll be meeting to determine whether or not we can support a cheerleading program with the numbers. So if you are one of the individuals who have signed up for cheering and you really want to have that program, please reach out to your friends and colleagues to make sure that you encourage them to sign up so that we can ensure that we have this program for our student athletes. Uh, girls basketball, you can see we have approximately eight girls signed up in the middle school level, 17 in the high school. We have 14 currently signed up for boys in the middle school and 22 in grades nine through 12, which would indicate that we should be able to support three different levels of teams on both the boys and girls side. Um, every sports season, there always seems to be some question regarding student playing time. If you have any questions about your child's playing time, please schedule an appointment to meet with the coach. Do not approach the coach after a contest. Schedule a time to meet with them here at the school so that we can have a professional discussion about your child's playing time. It is important to note though, that the district does have a procedure regarding playing time. The varsity level is a competitive level and there's absolutely no guarantee of playing time. Playing time is totally up to the coach's discretion. They are going to put the student athletes on the floor that they feel are best suited to try and win the game. And that's a universal policy throughout New York State, throughout the country. The varsity level is the highest level of competition in high school sports. We wanna be safe with who we put out there but we're also going out there to try and win. So the coach has the ultimate discretion about who he puts out there to try and make his or her team the most competitive it can be. At the JV level, it is also a competitive sport, but our coaches work hard to try and play everybody. Playing time is not equal at the varsity or at the JV level, excuse me, but we do make an honest attempt to try and get everybody into the game. The modified level is equal playing time to the greatest degree possible. It's, it's almost impossible to try and get every kid minute by minute, second by second playing time, but our coaches work really hard to try and create as equal playing time as possible at that modified level. The one little caveat with that is each team may have specific rules regarding playing time that correlate with mispractices, attitude, poor behavior both in the classroom, out of the classroom, on the practice facility that may alter our playing time rules. So even though we say modified team is equal playing time, if a student athlete is showing poor sportsmanship, if they're not participating in practice, if they miss a practice for an unexcused reason, that may then uh, dictate less playing time than everybody else. This information though will be talked about with your student athlete from our coaches once the season formally begins. Board policy number 527 is our academic eligibility policy. This policy dictates who is academically eligible to participate and attend our extracurricular and interscholastic athletic events. So at the five week or quarter marking period, if a student is failing two or three courses, they're placed on what's called academic probation and then they must complete the re-eligibility process on a week-by-week -week basis. That means the student must spend extra time with the teacher whose course they are failing, either during the study hall, at lunch, before school, after school, at a mutually agreed upon time. The teacher will sign off on their form, the student athlete then returns that form to the middle school, high school office each week, and then they're eligible to participate that following week. If a student athlete does not complete that re-eligibility process, they will be ineligible to participate or attend any extracurricular events during that week. If a student is failing four or more subjects at the five week or quarterly marking period, they are completely ineligible to participate or attend any extracurricular events. It's very important that our students maintain good academics in order to be able to participate in these activities. When our JV and varsity season begins, they'll be using the five week grades in order to determine their eligibility. So if you are a student athlete right now that is looking to participate on JV or varsity and you are on academic probation, you need to make sure that you are completing the re-eligibility process this week so that you're eligible to participate on Monday. 
If you are academically ineligible right now, you will not be able to start tryouts on Monday. You'll have to wait for the new report to come out and hopefully you'll be academically eligible to participate. For our modified students, quarter one grades will determine your eligibility and whether you're on probation or ineligible. If you have any questions about this process, again, please reach out to Mrs. Dupuy. She's very flexible with this. We want to see our student athletes participate, but we need to make sure that they are doing what they need to do in the classroom. So we will be flexible, we will be patient, we will help them, but they also have to take on some of this responsibility to show that they want to participate in our programs. We also have a daily attendance policy for our student athletes. They must be in attendance by 10 a.m. each morning in order to participate. If they arrive after 10 a.m., they still may be able to participate so long as they have a legal excuse for their tardiness. A legal excuse might be a doctor's appointment, a dentist appointment, a religious activity, they were coming out of quarantine, they had a college visit, they had some other educational activity. Any of those are legal excuses. You just need to provide documentation when you sign in and then you will be eligible to participate. Students who are suspended either in an in-school suspension setting or out of school are ineligible to participate while they're serving that consequence. Just as a note, sleeping in, missing the bus, not legal excuses. You got to make sure that you get here. In the past, the district has had a very strict transportation policy where student athletes are required to ride school provided transportation to contests. Parents and guardians then have the opportunity to sign their child out and drive them home. If you've been following along with the COVID pandemic and the rules from the Department of Health, a lot of district quarantines are the result of riding on the bus. The bus quarantine algorithms are extremely restrictive. So this year, the district is offering two different options for student transportation for our interscholastic athletics. Option one, school transportation as it's always been. Student athletes will ride to and from athletic contests on school buses. If you elect that option, please note masks are required to be worn on the bus, just as they are now for regular bus transport and there's no eating or drinking on the bus. Option two, we are allowing parents and guardians to transport their own child to and from contests. You can only transport your own child. You can't carpool with other kids. You can't pick up your neighbor's child. You can't pick up you know, a nephew. It has to be a parent or guardian or somebody who resides in that household. We have a specific transportation form that you can fill out that doesn't exclude you from school transportation if you need to use it, but it does give you the option to drive your son or daughter to and fro athletic contests. Just some general information regarding our winter sports advanced placement is allowed this year. Uh, students must follow the code of conduct, both the athletic code of conduct and our, our school district's code of conduct to be eligible to participate. This year, the Board of Education is allowing Sunday practices. This is a trial for the 21-22 school year. We do not have access to our cafeteria this year for interscholastic practices. So now we're going to try and cram six different teams into the gym on a daily basis for practices or games. So we're looking for some extra flexibility with our practice times. So the Board of Education has authorized us to allow Sunday practices. Teams still have to abide by the, the six-day rule. You can't participate for more than six days straight. And we still need to be cognizant of family obligations, religious observations, and other events that pop up on a Sunday, which is traditionally a family day. But this is an available option for our teams to practice on Sunday. Some general COVID protocols for our winter sports season. I think it's really important to know that if your child is participating in basketball or cheerleading, they are at a high risk of quarantine. It is what's considered a high risk sport. It has close physical contact and it's indoors. The Department of Health has informed us that if there is a COVID positive individual at practice, more than likely the entire team is going to get quarantined unless the individual is vaccinated. If there is a positive individual at a contest, 
most likely both teams are going to be quarantined unless your child is vaccinated. So there is a very high risk of quarantine by participating in basketball or cheerleading unless your student athlete is vaccinated. We are in a high community transition or transmission area per the Department of Health. The county does have the ability to shut down all high risk activities. There has been no discussion at this point from the county that they're going to shut down basketball, but please know if the rates continue to rise in our county, the county does have the ability to just automatically shut down our high risk activities. So that includes basketball, that would include chorus, that would include band. It's not just interscholastics, it has a wide range. At this time, there is no testing requirement for our student athletes. You might hear that there are requirements in other leagues that are, that are doing that. The Adirondack League, Northern District, are requiring testing of student athletes at this time. Masks do have to be worn for all activities and there's no exceptions to this rule. This is a very clear statement from the Department of Health and the New York State Education Department. Everybody inside a school building has to be wearing a mask and they have to wear it properly. Has to cover your mouth, has to cover your nose. We are not going to be the mask police chasing after people, but it is Mrs. Dupuis, Coach Capone's, Nurse Arlen's, my responsibility to ensure that student athletes and coaches and spectators are following the mask mandate. So if we see a mask not being properly worn, we will have to address it. If student athletes are continually not following that rule, there may be disciplinary action, including not participating in that sport. For spectators, masks are required. And if spectators refuse to follow that directive, either here or at an opposing school, they may be asked to leave. So we, we really ask that everybody follows that mandate from the state. Student athletes must provide their own supplies of water bottles, towels, and masks. These items should be washed daily. We're gonna to try to limit the sharing of equipment to the greatest degree possible. We're continuing to encourage proper hand hygiene and coaches should remain socially distanced to the greatest degree possible during practices and game type situations unless they're demonstrating a skill or an activity. Student health, we're, we're still monitoring our students' health, ensuring that they remain healthy. Our daily Raptor system is still going just as a reminder to ensure that your student is feeling well enough to attend school. Please do not come to school if you are ill or not feeling well. I know you wanna to come to practice. I know you'll wanna to come to a game, but don't put yourself in a situation where you jeopardize yourself or your teammates by coming in, not feeling well, and then potentially quarantining a large group of individuals. If you're not feeling well, stay home, receive treatment, get an alternative medical diagnosis, and then come back, take a day or two off, as opposed to missing a long period of time. Any participant with one illness symptom must follow the New York State Department of Health COVID-19 flowchart for schools before returning to interscholastic athletics. If you have questions about what you need to do to return to school, or if you're not feeling well, please contact Nurse Arlen and she will work with you, get you the resources necessary to get you back to school as quickly as possible. As I mentioned, if there is a COVID exposure, fully vaccinated individuals will not be required to quarantine so long as they are asymptomatic. Right? So if your student athlete is fully vaccinated and asymptomatic following a close contact, they will not be required to quarantine. There's no additional restrictions on their participation. Depending on what the, how the numbers play out or the situation of the exposure, the county may require additional precautions but there's no movement in, in that yet. If your student athlete is unvaccinated and they are deemed to be a close contact, either at a practice, a contest, or on the bus, they will be required to quarantine for 10 days and they will also need medical clearance to return to participate. So that's a very high risk and you wanna make sure that you're following all the precautions necessary to ensure that your child will not be quarantined. We're asking all of our participants, student athletes, officials, coaches, chaperones, shot clock operators, ticket takers, to be vigilant in their daily health practices to ensure availability for everyone in the building. Adirondack League does have specific COVID-related rules for the winter sports season. 
wanted to put this out there so teams know what they're getting into. If a team has a student athlete who is quarantined, it is not an automatic reschedule. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, there is an extreme shortage of officials. Facilities have very limited use. So trying to reschedule games is going to be a very big burden for districts to try and overcome. So the Adirondack League has said, if the team has enough players on their varsity, JV, or modified roster that is equal to or greater than the number of players required to can be considered a complete lineup. So for basketball, that's five. You only need five on the floor. The team is required to maintain that scheduled game. Right? Varsity is not required to bring up JV players to fill the roster, but if the varsity team has five eligible players on their roster, they have to participate in that game, irregardless of who those five varsity players are. Same for, thing for JV, same thing for modified. Again, going back to that flexibility slide, weekend contests are probably going to be required due to makeups and shortages of officials. We're probably going to be playing back-to-back -back days or non-traditional days to try and get the games in prior to the league championship and the sectional contests, potentially regionals and states. We have to get these games in, and the league has certain protocols of what will happen if you cannot make up these games. But it is important to know, if we have five, we are required to play. After school, we talk about this every year. If a student athlete's practice is not immediately after school, for example, they have a practice at 4 30, 5 o'clock, they are not permitted to stay in the building until that practice. We do have late buses at 3 10, so they can stay after with a teacher and do makeup work, get extra help, take the late bus home. We have supervision in the cafeteria until 310, but after 310, there is no supervision and student athletes need to make alternate arrangements either with friends or relatives or with their coaches for supervision until their practice. Looking at just some basketball specifics, we have our coaches listed uh, for all three levels. Right now, we're still looking for a girls modified coach. We have been advertising for that in the local media. If anybody is interested in that position or knows of somebody who would be qualified for that position, please have them reach out to Coach Capone. We will be practicing in the gym. The cafeteria is not available this year for any types of practices. As I mentioned, masks are required. There's no exceptions to that rule. And we're going to need to be flexible again with our practice times. Again, fitting six teams into the gym on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be hard. So what I've listed is what a sample schedule may look like. So we might have a night where our modified and JV boys are practicing together. And then our modified and JV girls are practicing together. And then our two varsity times have individual time slots. This is not how it's going to look every day. This is just a sample. We'll be working with our coaches to ensure equity to the greatest degree possible. But we also want to ensure that our varsity athletes have the most time available in the gym because of the competitive nature of their sport. But again, we're going to be flexible. We're probably going to have Sunday practices, Saturday practices, combined practices. It might change on a week to week basis. So we're just asking for everybody's patience and understanding so we can try and continue to provide this opportunity for our student athletes. Cheerleading specifics, we do have a coach, Mrs. May Megan Marshall Sala. Uh, we haven't identified where their practices are going to be held. Masks will be required for our cheerleaders. They will be required to be socially distanced while performing. Cheerleading will only be conducted at home venues. Cheerleaders per the Adirondack League are not eligible to travel. But again, we only have two individuals signed up right now. So if we want to maintain our cheering program, we need to really get out there and recruit and ensure that we have more students signing up to participate. Spectators. The Adirondack League just passed today our spectator policy. Each student athlete will be given four passes. These passes guarantee entrance to the pass holder to any Adirondack League venue. Additional spectators may be allowed on the host school's determination or local basis. We do have some large schools that participate in the Adirondack League. For example, Lake George, 
in Warrensburg. They have large gyms that can accommodate large crowds and ensure social distancing. Those venues may not have any restrictions on spectators. Some of our smaller gyms, Argyle, Fort Ann, uh, Hartford, we have smaller venues. We're probably going to have limits on the number of spectators allowed. Our first priority is ensuring that family members are eligible to watch their student athlete participate. So each student athlete will be given four passes. Those passes guarantee a seat in any single Adirondack venue, even if they have restrictions on their site. It is important to note Fort Edward will be playing in their smaller gym this year. They're using their larger gym for their cafeteria to ensure social distancing. So they will not be having any spectators whatsoever in Fort Edward. Once we know what each individual school's rules on the spectators are, we will put that out to the coaches so that parents and guardians have that information. The last thing we want is for six family members to drive to Hadley Luzerne on a Friday, snowy Friday night to find out that only four of them can get into the gym. So we will put out all of that information as soon as we can. And we're in the process now of developing what these passes will look like for our families. Most schools are working on a streaming solution. As I talked about for our volleyball meeting in the fall, the district has signed up with the NFHS, the National Federation of High School Sports. And this is a live streaming option for our indoor sports. This is affiliated with the New York State Public High School and Section 2. And if you purchase a membership, which is $40 through the school, it will get, grant you access to any athletic event sponsored on the NFHS network. That includes all of the New York State sectionals, New York State regionals, New York State championship contests, boys and girls. It also includes a number of athletic opportunities throughout the country. I got a notification, I'm a member, I got a notification today that the Maryland Volleyball State Championships are going on tonight. So I can log on and watch the Maryland State Championships in volleyball. Hartford is a member of this. So if you are interested in purchasing a membership, either for yourself, for a grandparent, for an out-of-area out of relative who might not be able to get a pass to come to the games, it's $40 and you would just contact Mrs. Dequay or Mrs. Connor in the high school office and we'll get you set up with that pass. Argyle currently has the NFHS, so you can certainly watch any of the Argyle games. Whitehall, I believe, has this as well. More and more schools are signing up for this. It guarantees you the right to watch it. I did forget to mention, we are not going to be charging our spectators this year for entrance into the game. So if you have your family pass, when you come in, there is no charge to come into our games. If you have any concerns, Throughout the course of the season, if you're concerned about the safety, if you're concerned about COVID protocols not being followed, either in our district or another district, we do have a COVID hotline set up. The phone number is displayed there, as well as an online Google form that can be accessed through the school webpage. So you can submit information to the district so that we can then go and investigate and ensure that we are following the Department of Health protocols to the letter of the law and ensuring the safety and well being of all of our student athletes. Whew. At this time, I'll open it up. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat or unmute yourself. I know that's a lot of information to process. Um, feel free if you don't have a question now or if you think of a question later, you can always reach out to Mrs. Dupuy, Coach Capone, your child's coach or myself. We'll do our best to answer that question. But if you have any questions right now, please feel free to ask and we'll stay on and answer them to the best of our ability. As we're waiting for any questions, is there anything that I missed, Mrs. Dupuy or Coach Capone, that you would like to add in? Nope, I think you covered it all. Thank you. I agree. I think you covered it all. Very good. Thank you. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question, or I opened up the, the chat. So if anybody wants to type it in the chat, I'll monitor that as well. If you don't have any questions, I appreciate 
your time. I appreciate your patience as we work through this process, and I look forward to seeing you at some of our games this winter. Mustang Sally, you really don't have any questions this time? <laughs> you know, Andy, I almost just got on just 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 to comment, but I was I was waiting. Uh, no, I, I think you covered it, Andy. You always do a good job of that anyway. So um, the only question I had, maybe I missed it in and out of conversation, was when are passes uh, the the spectator pass is going to be available or where do we get them? I guess I didn't, I didn't catch any of that. No, good question. So we're, we're working on the league just passed that policy today. So we'll work on designing those passes and then we'll make sure that they're issued to the student athletes as soon as we can to make sure that they have them for their first games. Okay, perfect. Thanks guys. You're welcome. All right, well, I'm just going to I'm going to stay on the meeting, but I will stop the recording.